What's going on YouTube? This is Luke with Endless Entrepreneurs just coming to you with a uh, 9 p.m. Eastern live uh, kind of a, my listing setup and getting back out of the L.L. Bean mode and into standard merchandise. So just thought it'd be cool to show you guys my current setup now that I got things cleaned up up here. Um, how I've been listing or how I like to list shirts and other items and uh, what equipment I'm using, kind of my process in each stage. I've had a lot of viewers ask to do that. I do have some tutorial videos where I show bits and pieces, but someone just want, you know, had a lot of questions about asking, can I just see the whole process from start to finish? Thought this was a great opportunity to do that for you guys because I do have a couple more listings to get done tonight before I go to bed. Um, for those of you new to my channel, I am a part-time uh, eBay seller and a full-time corporate finance analyst. I uh, build my business in my spare time and uh, document that journey here. I uh, appreciate all the support. I see everyone's starting to fill in now. Uh, this is live, so I'm going to try to give all the content up front, give the tour, do the listing, and then we'll definitely do some Q&A at the end. I do apologize for the lighting for this. The, the only way I can show you guys listing is having the umbrella lights here, which is going to cast some weird shadows, so just caveat up front. It's going to look a little odd, but you should still be able to see what I'm doing. Um, so I'm just going to first here give you a little bit of a tour. Let's see if I can flip the camera here. <clears throat> so... Here is the clothing that I'm going to be prepping over this next week. This is what I've been collecting over the last month while I've been listing my, uh, my LL Bean bulk order. So I've been kind of collecting it here. This all needs to be listed and prepped. Um, I have like an upstairs loft here. This is where I used to do my videos. You guys might recognize that painting there. Um, need to get, we've since moved the futon in here so I don't have as much room. There's my computer. It's kind of a mess, but that's where I do all my shipping. You can see my thermal label printer there. I use thermal labels for all my printing. I do all of the printing there. Um, here is my picture setup. I have, this is a seven by five backdrop. It's like a frame. Um, and that's just like a cheap $10, like a it's not even vinyl, it's like a, it's even cheaper than that, I think. Um, but it's just like a screen print for a backdrop. So I use that and my umbrella lights. Um, and I just use two. I know there is a three umbrella setup that is nice to use and is better than lighting, but I just use the two. It's what I've always had. It seems to work decent. That is a mannequin. Yes, it's on a table. <laughs> no, that's not standard. I broke my mannequin years ago. Um, I say years. Oh, yeah, about two years ago. And so now it sits. It fell all the way down. Actually, the what it used to stand up on is all the way up by the neck inside of it. And it spins freely, which is kind of a nice feature. Uh, then I come from my right to left. I always start with pictures. That's why my inventory is here. So I'll do pictures here. And then when I'm done, I kind of stack them over here. And so this is my standing desk. I highly recommend standing desks if you can afford it. Um, I love, love these standing desks. It can go high, low. Right now it's set to sit at, um, but when I do a lot of my prepping, I do raise it up so I can stand. Um, there is, you can see kind of my shipping station. I lay clothes on top of it while I'm listing, but that's also where I ship. It's got all my supplies. I normally would ship and just kind of toss them over there and whatnot. But um, So that's kind of my setup. I try to make that kind of you, um, shape set up here just because it's easier to work for me and I can kind of stand in the middle of it uh, but let me just kind of prop you back on the tripod here for a second you guys can see my face there tripod just makes things easier for me so that's my setup guys it's nothing fancy nothing expensive I mean these are pretty cheap umbrella lights nothing I haven't really spent a lot of money on it. the standing desk is probably the biggest purchase I have but it definitely makes um, you know it just makes listing a lot easier <clears throat> I'm going to show you the camera I'm using. Although I have to say that I am definitely becoming more of a fan of the iPhone, um, just because I'm starting to get really good with drafts um, and starting to be able to, I don't know, with flat lane, I definitely do faster the phone. I do normally though use this as a PowerShot SX20. Um, it's an older camera, it's a Canon. There's definitely better ones out there for the money. I recommend if you don't have it in the budget, just use your phone. I mean, the, the camera is good enough. Uh, but this is what I use. I like to use it because I can pop an SD card in here. I pop it out, plug in my computer. Um, I just keep the pictures in the same order. Actually, I'm looking for my SD card right now. I think it's over here. Not sure if I have enough battery life. I do, good. All right, so that's always good. But I just use one of these um, for my SD card plug-in. Pops in my computer, um, no big deal. So that's kind of my setup, guys. And I just wanted to walk through, I'm gonna, talk through a couple different clothing items here. Most of these are shirts, a couple different types of tops. Um, and I'm just gonna walk through, it might be boring for some people who are already seasoned sellers, so just kind of caveat up front, but I have had a lot of newer sellers asking me just to walk through what I would normally do. And typically I would wake up at 4 a.m., I'd have one of these buckets here, 
ready to go, you know, sorted, and I would just power through. So I'm gonna do like five or six in a row of pictures so you can kind of see the rhythm that I get into. And then we'll go over and I'll record doing measurements and that'll kind of show the whole preparatory process for that. Um, so I'm just gonna jump in. I'm not gonna be watching the chat, but hopefully you guys can see just fine. The nice part with the mannequin, that might be going a little slower since I'm talking, is you can really just throw it over the top, which is excellent. This one happens to be full zip. Um, this is an Adidas Climalite. It's a Texas a It was actually in my haul video the other day. Um, but full zip. And the good part of the backdrop, guys, you don't need it to be huge. You just need it to be big enough so that you can crop and uh, keep it in. And so I always I just hold the camera back a little bit so I can lock in the color. Oops. Snapped a little picture a little early there. So basically, I'm just taking one picture there. If there's logos and details in the front here, I usually take a more zoomed in one and that's my front picture. So it's kind of like that angled shot here. And then because my mannequin's broken, I can just spin it like this, which is very nice. Not sure that I recommend breaking your mannequin necessarily, but it is a nice feature. I just kind of keep spinning. Get one in the back. And I, I do encourage people having more pictures if you can spare the time, unless you're such a high volume seller that it doesn't make sense, having extra pictures definitely helps sell the item. Um, especially something like this that has a lot of detail on it. You, you know, the buyer's gonna wanna see what they're looking at. And then with the sleeves, I kinda just fold it in front like this and take a zoomed in picture of both sleeves just so they can see what the cuff looks like, uh, that sort of thing. And then the last step I use, I use this stool here, but it's just to take pictures of the tag because it's on the mannequin. Um, you can just throw it off there, it's easy. And then I kind of just put it on the stool so I don't, I don't have to bend down too much. And it's just one picture of the tag, I've got it good to go. So from there, I just start piling over here where I can grab to measure afterwards. So there's one. And you guys will start to see like, that was really quick to put on the mannequin, whereas this is a button front shirt, and this is a Donald Trump uh, dress shirt. These take a little longer because I have to button all of them. So, you know, that is the downfall of the mannequin with buttons. I mean, I guess flat line you do either way. Um, I still like the mannequin look, especially for dress shirts. But so we got to button this guy up. Button it as fast as I can, guys. <laughs> all right. Get that top button. And same thing, I just kind of lead with that top angle picture. Get one standing back. Get the full shot, side shot. And if you hear that little beep, that's just me kind of zooming in on the color and holding it. Making sure it stays consistent. sleeve. And we can just, I always don't do the top button because it's easier to pull it off the mannequin. And away we go. So there's two done. Picture's all set. Hopefully that's making sense to everyone. Um, I'm going to try to grab some different types of items if I have them. I guess these are mostly dress shirts. Here's a jacket. So this is like a big North Carolina jacket, pretty cool item. Um, got this actually in that bulk Facebook buy I had. Right before I got my LL Bean order, I picked up like 300 items, or no, 150 items, I guess it was, off a uh, Facebook buying group. Right. So, something like this, um, I'm definitely going to zoom in on the logo, but still get that angled shot. There is a tiny little mark on the front, so I usually get that first just so they can see the mark. Um, any flaws on it, you definitely want to make sure you picture. And if you can tell from the size of it through your picture, that's even better. Something like this with Tar Heels, I'll occasionally kind of spread the. Try to keep your hand out of the picture just because it looks better if you can. Alright, so 
that's three items. And this is a 3XL, so it should actually sell pretty well. And now, let me see this. So this is a, oh, this is a Guy Harvey shirt. That's cool. I'm gonna show you the brand here, just so you can see. I'm just gonna do one more here. I was planning to list, I need to list four more items. This should work out pretty perfect for the day. Now this, you'll also see, so the color area backdrop, just another little tip. So I, I struggle with two colors. One is purple, looks awful on here. And then this, sometimes shades of blue like this will look a little off which is kind of, I haven't really figured out a way around that yet. The only way to do it would be to have two separate backdrops that work with both. Um, ah, and I, I'm glad I caught that comment. So tons of people ask me all the time, do you steam? I, I really don't. Like you say steam that shirt, they're gonna wash it when they get it. They care about the pattern. I don't think the presentation matters that much that it's gonna not move the shirt for me. I'm fairly convinced about that. I do have a handheld steamer. I just don't think because this is a $20 item, right? This isn't a $100 suit. Taking the time to steam that, I don't think is ROI positive, right? If it, it just to me, I, I don't see the win or the equity in that for my time. That's my view. Um, you know, and someone just asked, do clothes sell really well? So clothes sell well, they are longer tail items depending on how you price them. I price mine higher. Um, but like for instance, I'm not gonna steam this. Um, if it's really, really bad, I may steam it. But I mean, like one out of a hundred shirts I do, I steam, and you know I'm just not that worried about it. Um, oh, someone just recommended that I check my camera uh, manual for adjusting the color. Yeah, I should do that. I should jump online and see. I don't have the actual original um, manual, but um, someone just said they wash and iron and pull out the dryer right away. Yeah, I don't even bother to wash. For me, it's just not worth it. Like my time, I pick that up. This is a four dollar to twenty dollar transaction. Taking that extra time just doesn't really work for me. I'm not saying you shouldn't, just from my model and how I'm approaching it, I just don't, I don't bother to do that. Maybe it does hurt my sales, I'm not sure, but I haven't had too much trouble yet. But let me just finish this one up and we'll shift over to um, how I measure and kind of set up over there. So we'll this. And this one actually has some pretty cool like fish patterns on it, which is nice. I'm not talking, I usually can pump out, you know, I can do about 30 shirts in an hour with pictures. Um, sometimes upwards to 40, depending on how fast I'm moving. So when you really focus and get grooving, you can get a lot done. So there's four. So now I'm gonna show you guys kind of <clears throat> All right, so we got standing desk here. I'm gonna kind of give you the, the sneak peek here of the standing desk and why I like it so much. So I have over here, we just have the clothes pile. So that's what I would normally do. And I would stack them up. I mean, I'd do 30, stack them right up to here. And now my standing desk, what's cool, is it's got this crank, pops out, and actually that's going down, up it goes. So now I don't want to sit. I want to make sure that I'm standing for you guys. This can go as high as I want. Easy to crank, no resistance. It's pretty nice. I can't see the comments right now, guys, so I do apologize for that. I will check them out when we do Q&A at the end. Looks like we have almost 100 people watching. Thank you, guys. Hopefully this is helpful. I know it's a little boring to you more seasoned sellers, but I just this question gets asked so much that I, I felt like I really should do a video on it. All right, so this is a probably about, for me, this is about right, um, desk height. Let me just kind of crank here a little bit. All right, so for me, typically, oh, and I'm missing a piece of paper. One second, guys. So this is where I get criticized nonstop for this, which is totally okay. Like everyone's got their own approach. I actually write down little blurbs about what my, my list is gonna be. And the reason is, is that when I take the pictures and then I line them up with this with inventory numbers, I might list them sporadically throughout the week on my laptop watching TV or I can't say watching TV, I don't really watch TV. But like if I'm downstairs with Shannon, spend some time with her, I might be listing, right? Or spending time in the morning while after I read, I might just list right on the couch. And so for me, it makes sense to have it written down here instead of creating the drafts live on eBay and coming back to them. 
Um, I am experimenting with both processes right now because of the L.O. Bean order. I got so familiar with the drafts that I'm trying to figure out a hybrid, especially if I ever get some hired help that's helping me with listings. You know, I think doing drafts in that way is the way to go. Um, this morning, I actually did uh, 12 pair of pants in like 45 minutes from start to finish live, which is pretty cool. Uh, they're all jeans. They're all different brands, one-offs. So I've definitely seen some efficiencies in that. Uh, and it is cool to have them live and up and listed instead of doing it in batches. But I'm just such a big believer in batches and the efficiency that if you have the time, it seems to work. Um, but so what I would do here is I have my tape measure, which is just... Everyone, I mean, if, if you're doing clothing, guys, you really should have measurements. It's just going to save you time on the back end of people asking. It's going to save on returns because they can check the exact size. Um, I just, I encourage and endorse measurements. I know some sellers don't. It's not a knock. It's just what I encourage. If you, especially if you're going for longer tail, higher price items, you should have a measuring tape. Um, <clears throat> uh, that's about all I use for this. The only thing I use is I have masking tape because I label inventory numbers, and I use these. 12 by 15 poly bags. Um, they have like a little flap lock on them. I usually just leave my workstation here. And this is what I put the clothing on, I'll show you in a minute, in this bag, label it, and it goes in the bin. For me, that's the best way. I don't have a temperature controlled storage unit, so this helps protect it. It's also ready to ship. I just pull it out and drop it in a, a sealed uh, poly bag. So now I've got all of my clothes over here. It's normally, like I said, it'd be a lot more. And I would just go through one at a time Throw it, on my, just throw it on my stand desk here. Now, a lot of people say I should have a measuring tape here. Yes, I could. Um, I just don't. I don't really have a good reason for it. <laughs> I just don't. I use a tape measure. But basically, for shirts, you want pit to pit. Um, and so I lay it flat and just take armpit seam to armpit seam. So this is 23 inches. And I can keep track of my head. So I'll do all three measurements and then write them down. So this is 23. And then I do sleeve, which is... Shoulder seam, I'm just gonna show you guys. So I do shoulder seam to the end, right? And there are a couple, I think there's two different ways to do shoulder measurements, but this is the way I do it. And you just should notate in your listing that you're measuring from here to here. Um, so yeah, so you had 23, we had nine. And then I just spin the shirt around real fast and I get my length, so 23, nine, and 32. And those are the first three things I'll write down here is just 23, nine and 32. I always write them in the same order. I know what the measurements are for. I put my inventory tag on this. Um, and so this is 0122 because I got a bin started. And then I just put the brand. I put the pattern of the shirt. So let's just say white and blue stripe fish pattern. And I put the material. This is cotton. And I put the size and the gender. So XL and then M. And then I put condition and just put an abbreviation. So I just use excellent use condition or something like that. And that way I know that one's done. I package it up right here. I don't have to touch it again, right? And then to make the listing live, I just pair up the inventory number with the order I took the pictures when I dump them on my computer and they're right there, married up, ready to go. If I do it later, I have all the detail I need to recall the item. And that's just, this is what works for me. So norm, my next step here, which is the other question I get asked all the time is to store my inventory. Because I use, and I like the flap lock guys in the bag because I can fold it over and then I can put the tape on it. That just seems to work well for me. Normally I'd have a Sharpie here, but all my Sharpies are downstairs because the orders I've been processing. But this, so this is 0122. So I just, just write it on there, nothing fancy. And then I tape it shut and I just drop it in my bin. <clears throat> Same thing, rinse, repeat, and then I would go down the list, and that's how I would go about my listings. And depending on how many I want to do for the day, right, a lot of times, like on weekends, I'll try to batch like 30, 40, 50 at a time, stock up throughout the week so that I can list each morning. And then I'll also like spend an hour each morning prepping just to keep working ahead and snowballing it. Um, so this is this is what works for me guys. I'm always looking to evolve I've learned a lot through my bulk purchase with my L.O. Bean stuff Definitely gaining some efficiencies and I'm open to change all the time Which is why I like doing these videos because everyone has such great ideas um, But again, I've been getting this question over and over and just with this bulk buy last month I haven't had a chance to show people now that I'm getting back into these type of items I just want to show you guys kind of step by step my world how I attack it and how I do things uh, So hopefully this made sense to you guys. Hopefully that you know this wasn't too overly like overdone or complex. I really wanted to just keep it very simple. I try to keep things simple for myself so I don't get confused with it. Hopefully that makes sense the supplies I use. Um, 
I'm going to, I'm actually going to take a seat and we can kind of finish up some Q&A here. So let me grab my chair. I'm going to be kind of lazy. All right. So hopefully that light should be a little better now. Oops. All right. So now, wow, that's really low, huh? <laughs> uh, maybe we'll bring that down. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. One second. Adjusting on the fly here. All right. That's much better. So, now that I can see the chat, let's see what everyone's been saying here. Sorry about... Oh, so yeah, someone asked about bread bag or not asked, but suggested bread bags. And if you're on a shoestring budget, they're actually... You can buy in bulk uh, the bread bags. And I think they're a lot cheaper than um, the ones I'm buying. Now I'm buying mine at like four or five cents a piece. So I mean, they're not very expensive if you buy in bulk. I also bought mine in extreme bulk before this year started. I did it at like 10,000 quantity. Um, so I got them really a lot cheaper that way. Uh, but that's just, that's just how I approach it. Sorry guys, I'm trying to make sure I'm not catching, missing stuff here. Um, Sherry said, I use Sizely. You can just type all that info in and have it as a photo on your listing. Interesting. I haven't used that. I'll have to check that out. Um, Nifty today has, they have a notebook they write stuff in too. Um, let's see. I'm just scrolling up here, guys. And if you have questions, start dropping them in. Put question or a bunch of qu or question marks. Sorry if I look a little, uh, a little wore out. We had a softball game we just got back from. We've had softball playoffs. So I'm just kind of relaxed and trying to unwind right now. Uh, Shannon does have, oh yeah, I'm not sure if there's a question, but Shannon has a lady mannequin. So a, I have the men's one and we have a women's one. Um, I'm actually, and I have, I've been really thinking on this. I'm going to start learning more about women's clothing. Um, I'm going to start expanding into that realm a little bit because as I look, as I look to, yeah, Shannon will help teach me is as I look to push my average sale price up, I'm going to need to be pickier with some of my items. And I think that expanding the women's helps a lot with that. I also think that here in Charlotte, and I hope I'm not mistaken, but the stuff I was seeing that Shannon was pulling, she was just so much more plentiful than the men's. I think there are more men's clothing pickers than women's here. I could be wrong, but I think that um, a lot of people go to the bins, but the retail stores themselves seem to be packed with good women's stuff. Um, so I am going to start figuring that out. Uh, Phil House said, you guys must be pressing for space. Uh, actually, surprisingly, we're not. Um, a little bit when we had the bulk order in here, but now that I've got it cleaned out, um, now that I've cleaned it, I have the two storage units and that makes a huge difference. Like that was non-negotiable for Shannon and I both. I don't do clutter and neither does she. Um, this is about as cluttered as it gets for me to operate in. Uh, so I have those two storage units, keeps all the inventory out of here, which is nice. Um, Deborah said, what do you have your backdrop clip to? Okay, let me, uh, let me just drop off. I'll show you guys real quick. A lot of people ask that question too. So. And don't judge me with how dirty it might be back here. I haven't looked at this window in quite a while. <laughs> um, but so this is like a, it's a frame. I don't know if you can see here. So that's like, it's like a five by seven. And they're the same stands as these right here. The light stands. It just, it's a frame, goes together. And then you use these little clamps to clamp this, you know, the, the vinyl print onto. So um, nothing too crazy. I think I got the stands for like 20 bucks on eBay. I'll try to find the link and add them to the description. After when I go live, I don't actually like I don't put the descriptions and I have to go in after and do it So I'll try to get those in this video here in the next, you know, 10 or 15 minutes after it ends um, But yeah, that backdrop that was a cool addition. I used to use a sheet on a wall I did use a blank wall for a while. I've done all sorts of things just to get a clean color um, I mean you guys can adapt and use what works best for you guys um, Drummer just said to show the stand desk. I did just a little bit drummer. I'll just have you um Rewind and watch after if you don't mind, but here's the crank for it. Um, you know, it's pretty easy It's there's not any like weight restriction like you don't have to be strong to crank this it moves up and down pretty freely um, And this was about 240 bucks from Ikea Like I said when you can afford it I highly recommend it because the ergonomics just allows you to work so much harder and faster um, When you're feeling better and your body's feeling good and you can switch from sitting up and down um, 
Joel just said, do you always use the same backdrop? So no, actually, I bought a different one that I was using for all my L.L. Bean pants. It was more like a generic wood background. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna order a different one. I wanna keep switching it up. And the reason, it's a weird reason, but I wanna start telling the time periods that I've been listing things in. Like I can, I know a lot of my old inventory based on that it was like with a white backdrop and not a um, like printed one. So it's kind of like, I think keep continuing to switch and mix it up and get different things will help me manage that. I think it'll also keep things fresh and exciting for me and for buyers and differentiate me a little bit. So yeah. Um, Kelly J said, I use Velcro command strips for my backdrop. Doesn't mess the wall up. Oh, that's really cool. Um, someone was asking if been an increase in sales might've been kind of up and down. Um, definitely a little stronger than May, but I had like, I think I had like a 300 and almost a $400 day on June 2nd. And I had like a $20 day June 3rd, like a $100 day June 4th. So it's just been like this. So I'm hoping they pick up or stabilize. I've been listing like crazy. I'm trying to list the short tail and medium tail stuff now before I go on vacation. I'm trying to get up like 200 items before we leave. Uh, I got up about 30 between yesterday and today, which is nice. Um, Chipmaker said backdrops are really cheap, so it's definitely worth having several. Yeah, I mean, I bought these for $10, I think, on eBay. Granted, I will, you know, caveat, they shipped from China. They took 20, you know, 20, 30 days to get here. But, I mean, if you're not in a rush for it, like, you can get into them really cheap. It doesn't need to be super high quality. R1 said he agrees that changing something shows the time frame for it. Yeah, it definitely does. Let's have got 100 people watching, guys. I really appreciate you guys stopping in this kind of uh, impromptu video. But I was scrolling through. I, I keep track. Every time you guys leave comments with ideas or things you want to see, um, I always write them down and I kind of have them on my notepad. So I was scrolling through looking for ideas tonight and to do a video. Um, we got back earlier from our softball game than I thought, so I figured I'd you know jump on here and see what everyone's up to. And uh, so this is what I settled on. So glad it was helpful. I'm glad everyone's tuning in here. Hi, Jessica. Um, any other questions you guys have on setup or even suggestions? Because, I mean, I selfishly, I like these videos because I always seem to come away with a good suggestion to implement in my process. So um, I like soaking up some of that knowledge. And I've just asked Luke, put an adhesive tape measure on the table to save time, get a Lowe's or eBay. Uh, you're, yeah, that's what I'm going to keep saying. I, I'm going to have to do that. I need to not be stubborn in my ways and actually try to adjust with that. So you know what? This weekend, Anna, I'm going to go out. I'm going to buy them and install two of them, put two of them on there and... Uh, and at least I'll have it. Uh, go ahead, ask your question. Also, guys, while he's asking the question, um, oh, I'll insert it now. It says, how long do you wait on a buyer to pay before you submit a claim to eBay? Um, so the first thing I do is if they don't pay within 24 hours, I always send the like remind payment feature um, and send an invoice. So you can send a payment reminder from your mobile device, and then you can go on your computer and send an actual invoice. So you can do both. And then after 48 hours, if I still don't have payment, I'll send them a direct message and I'll just say, hey, just wanna make sure you still want this item. If not, no problem, just let me know so the other buyers have a chance to buy it and I can relist it. A lot of times that encourages a buyer to pay. Uh, <clears throat> and then if they don't, then I end up waiting until eBay allows you to open a case. I think it's two weeks, I'm not positive. It's something, it's really long, it's stupid long actually. It's one of the few things that really I think they need to evaluate and change. I mean, it should be like a 48 or in my opinion, if we're held as sellers as a standard to ship promptly, then they should have to pay promptly, and you should be able to open a case sooner than you know the length. But that is neither here nor there. You have to operate within their system. So, um, let's see. I Warren said I use backdrop rolled up with curtain rod through cardboard hand. From I don't quite understand that, but sounds cool. <laughs> Sorry, if you can explain a little better for me, I'd like to, I'd like to understand because it sounds cool. Um, Joel said, you said you don't deal with stained material. How much of your recent bulk buy was bad or stained? That's a great question. I'm up to over, like, it's close to 350 pieces of waste from it. Um, I still have about 550 to go through and list. I may find more waste in there. It's very possible. I think I'm going to end up right around like 500 pieces probably conservatively. So, you know, 500 of the 3,000, which I think is pretty normal for a clothing bulk buy that big. Um, oh, okay, I warn. It says unroll and hang on command strip when taking photos. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, someone asked, what percentage of your sales are from international buyers? Uh, I would say very low, probably 2 or 3%. I'd probably get one, maybe two a month. 
I'm not even sure if that percentage is right according to that, but yeah, probably one or two a month. Um, someone else has said, I have a guy who asked for free shipping after I stated that I couldn't do it. As I discounted way down, he stated that his credit card was stolen. Uh, I mean, I would just cancel the transaction and file a, well, if they didn't pay you, then just file the unpaid case and don't, do not, do not uh, ship it to them. I mean, if he agreed to pay it, he agreed to pay it. That's just the way it is. Um, Oh, okay, so Donna just said, two to four days you can set up payment requirements in your settings. So Donna, does that allow you to open a case after four days, two to four days? Or, because I thought that the case part, oh, Sarah just said, I called and opened a case after 48 hours. eBay suggested this to me four days ago. Oh, wow, awesome. See, again, taking stuff, two days to open and four days to wait, boo. I'm listening to this down. Okay. All right, I'm learning stuff here. So it looks like you can set your settings to two to four days and you know, after 48 hours, open a case. So that's great. Um, all right, what else we got here? Oh, so I do wanna kinda of do a little promo here for, so July 1st is coming up pretty quick. We're having the Charlotte meetup here for any of you guys who wanna come out and join us. Um, Got to give a shout out to Corinne and Jason over there and Prof Sales Channel. Uh, they've really spearheaded planning and organizing this, um, allowing me to piggyback and come in with them and just be a part of it and get to visit with everyone. So I'm appreciative. Um, but there is a Facebook group, like it's a closed group. It's not like a for fee there's no fees or anything. We're just keeping it only for people who are going to come to the meetup because we're going to use it as an organization tool just to show where we're at, what the itinerary is, things like that. It's not going to remain open after that. It's not like a social group or anything. But if you're interested, you know, hit probably the best way to do it is just shoot me a message on Instagram endless entrepreneurs um, let me know what your Facebook name is and then we can get you an invite into that group that way you know the itinerary I know a couple of people have been asking about it but it's gonna be July 1st we're gonna do um, probably like two or three stores in the morning and then have lunch at Whole Foods should be a really fun day um, hopefully we'll raid the thrift stores and clean them out and uh, it will be really cool to meet a lot of you guys who are local here in Charlotte we have a lot of resellers here a lot more than I thought and uh, it's really neat to meet up and see what everyone's all about so um, Megan just said, I use eBay's automatic unpaid buyer system. It's automatically opens the case after like two days and closes it automatically for you as well. Huh, that's awesome. See, and, and guys, this is unfortunately, like I'm not making excuses for me, but I pretty much all my time, I budget to listing and sourcing and like I'm trying to learn these intricacies of the settings, but my unpaid cases are so infrequent, it just hasn't been a priority enough to research this. So it's really cool. I appreciate you guys sharing all this information. I'm gonna start applying it because um, I just, I don't have them frequently enough to really dig deep and figure out ways to handle it. Um, I probably, I think I had like three maybe, two or three all of last month, so. Oh wow, Flip House said he's had four or five each week. That's crazy. Um, Illinois Picker said, most of the time when a case is open, buyers will pay, but there are times they just won't. I block those. You're lucky you have not had many deadbeat buyers yet. Yeah, I'm definitely lucky with that. And I mean, I just consider it part of the game, I guess. Um, it also would be really crappy if they paid out of guilt and then just returned it anyway. So I don't know. It is what it is. Um, yeah, I'm going to do that flip flop. He just said for me to set up the automatic stuff. I'm going to definitely do that after this and check it out. Hey, Positive Picker, thanks for stopping in. All the way from Pensacola, awesome. Actually, all the way, that's not far, from, not too far, about 10 hours from us. We got 120 on watching live, thanks guys. Hit that like button for me if you don't mind, I would appreciate it. Um, hopefully this was helpful. We're hitting about the 33 minute mark right now. I'm gonna talk for a couple more minutes, I'll take a couple more questions, and then I do need to finish listing these other couple items to hit my listing goal for the day. Um, and it's been nice, I've been getting back into my routine. I've been getting up early in the morning. It's nice reading and journaling again. Like. I was waking up early every day anyways, but when I was doing the L.L. Bean order, it was just like, it was down to business. Like I got up, I went straight to the garage and it was list. Straight to the garage and list. And so now it's been kind of nice getting back to some more self-development, like journaling, kind of figuring stuff out. And it's just, it's more balanced than just going psycho on L.L. Bean. So it's been, it's been a nice transition backwards. Um, and then any of you, uh, I just actually just booked my flight today. I don't know if any of you guys are in the green room, but if you're heading to the green room meetup in Austin, I'm pretty excited about that. That's going to be in mid July there. Um, so just booked that today. It's been nice kind of seeing the summer come together. Oh, the reseller meetup on the first and get that. So lots of some cool interaction with other like minded people. Um, have a good night, Heather. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, so 
Question in the chat, uh, am I doing the 60 day return policy or sticking to 30? Nope, I'm doing 60. Um, I, at this point right now, anything that's gonna make my listings more attractive than other sellers, I'm doing it. I mean, I'm gonna look better than the 30 day seller every time just because of that. I mean, it, even if it doesn't show higher in the search rankings for sure, definitively, like it still looks better. Like if they're looking at two shirts and one on a 60 day versus 30 day, it looks better. So I'm just, I'm going with it. Um, my returns are so minimal that it just, I can't see them going up drastically just because of that. So I'm just banking on that, hoping it, I guess. Um, Illinois Picker said, also do 12 picks on every auction, better visibility as well. Oh, that's great advice. Yeah, I did like six on my ties. Ties is the only thing I auctioned. Robin just said, question, had a counter offer on a shirt, which 35 shipped. My original listing was the cost of the item plus shipping. How do I adjust the price if I accept the counter, which includes shipping? Um, that's a good question. I think you can invoice them. Shannon, you've had that happen, right? What? What? So someone decides they're gonna pay for shipping? Yeah, you oh. can change it. So yeah, after it closes, you it. so you can accept it and then you can invoice them the exact amount, I believe is how that works. I'm not positive. I haven't had it happen because I offer free shipping, so I've never had to do it. Um, but I believe that's what you do is you accept it and then you send an invoice to them of the adjusted price. Um, before they pay. No, I do not charge a restocking fee, someone just asked. Um, if I, for selling clothing, I just don't think it's necessary. Like I had, two, I ended up with two return, or three returns last month, two or three. It was something really low. Like, I don't know. It's just, it, for me, it's just not worth it. I'd rather be a very friendly seller. Um, it just feels like doing the right thing too. Like, I don't know. It's just like, my time to deal with it, to enforce the restocking fee, to get the item back. To, most of the time, I'm just like, here, like just take the item. Like, unless it's super expensive, it's $25, $30 shirt, something's wrong with it, back and forth. I make the buyer, you know, unless the buyer's being a real shady person, like I make their day, I refund them, I move on, they're super happy with me, they leave great feedback, I move on. It was a $4 shirt, it cost me $4 a ship, I'm out eight bucks, I have a happy buyer though good feedback and I move on, my time is saved. So that's just kind of how I approach things. That's how I approach my business. Um, just try to maximize my time. <laughs> Illinois Picker said, it's just like Roadhouse, be nice until it's time not to be nice. That's an awesome reference. <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah, we'd love to see you out there for the, the, the meetup on the first. Um, just shoot me a message on Instagram and, uh, and let me know your Facebook name and I'll make sure you get an invite into the Facebook group for it on the first. No problem, Joel. Glad this was helpful. And hopefully this, hopefully just in general, like this was helpful for people. I think sometimes just seeing the process in raw form, not like in my rehearsed tutorial videos, like just seeing kind of how it works. Hopefully that's helpful to everyone. Um, it's really not overly complicated. Anyone can do this. Like I think that's, I think that's why I like eBay and clothing the most is I feel like anyone can just step in and pick this up and like there's lots of really good free information out there. You can just get your feet wet for very low upfront costs. And um, I, I just really think it's a neat. I'm actually working on a blog post right now. I know I've been working on one for a while. Uh, and I'm gonna do a video on it, but it's it's gonna be around, kind of along the lines of how if I, if I reset time and didn't have my business, how I would restart an eBay business for $200 or less. Like what I would buy, the approach I would take, like the strategy I would take. And I've been working on it, it's really fun because occasionally I'll just think about like, what would happen if I had no capital? What would happen if I didn't have inventory, I had to start from the bottom? Like what would I do now versus when I started three years ago? Or you know, like what's the difference? And so I'm gonna put out an article about that. I think it'll be pretty neat. Hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Um, and hopefully it'll help some newer sellers to the channel or just to the community on kind of how I would get started in my approach. It's not an expert by any means, but it's some, some guidance. So, all right guys, I'm gonna wrap up. Um, I need to get some stuff done. I'll answer this last question. The poly bags that I use are 12 by 15s. Um, and they're like a gray self seal. I think I have one here. So this is the 12 by 15. It's got the self seal label on it. And then I use the 12 by 15 flap lock pally bag to put 
my clothes in which you saw earlier. Um, I'll have all those links in the description for, uh, down there. They are affiliate links to Amazon. It doesn't charge you any extra, but I do get a small commission. If you do uh, do that and support the channel, I would appreciate it. Um, but either way, definitely do your shopping, check your prices, make sure you're getting into the stuff for the lowest possible cost because you want to take as much profit out of your business as you can and reinvest that into more inventory. So really appreciate everyone tuning in. I hope you guys all have an awesome night. Check me out on Instagram, Endless Entrepreneurs. And um, yes, flip flops, I will get some more motivational art on these walls pronto. Appreciate that. Have an awesome night, guys. Take care.